What's happening guys? I'm not usually up this early. Kind of did it to enjoy the beautiful weather. There's something to be said about when <laughs> you're awake and the rest of the city is kind of like sleeping in or slowly starting to wake up. So we're gonna go get a cup of coffee. See you in a minute. Seven forty-five, so it's not exactly early but it's like the first time that it's below 70 degrees since like march in san antonio and so you got to kind of take advantage of it while you can but the whole reason we're here the whole reason you even click this video is because today we're going to be talking about sport production for my team and i as far as like the guys that i work with for the missions we were trying to define like what exactly sport production is because there's so many different pieces and elements to it. Hopefully by the end of this, we'll be able to find a specific definition, but trying to piece it together and consider all the different aspects and elements that go into it, it's not so easy. Which is why before we can even consider how to get started or what a typical journey to getting into sport production looks like, we gotta be able to kind of accurately define it and talk about some of the pieces that go into it. And it's only after that that we can actually kind of talk about sort of what to expect, what goes on at a game, at a specific production for whatever the sport or whatever it is you might be getting into. And since I just finished my second year with the missions, kind of have a little bit of ground to talk about as far as like giving some advice on how to get started and how to improve and kind of what to expect as far as like how to first get into sport production. We're gonna take this on the road. So before we even find a definition for sport production, we have to consider sort of the greater scope of productions in general and what exactly it is because sport production is just kind of one piece of this greater productions funnel is a good way to look at it if you consider it like a funnel where you've got any sort of live production whether it be uh, tv and film theater concerts there's so many different avenues of productions in general so a big thing to kind of keep in mind is that no two productions are ever exactly the same. So every bit of information that I can share with you has to be taken with a grain of salt. That it's from my perspective, which I work in AA baseball for the San Antonio Missions, if I haven't made that clear in a bunch of these videos. But even within the Texas League that the Missions play in, every single team is gonna have their own production as far as what their needs are. Every team for every league, for every sport, it's all gonna be slightly different variations of the same thing. So even though every single production is different, every production needs the same two things, which are technical elements and people to run those elements. So for example, with the technical aspects, obviously you're gonna need cameras, but you also might need like a replay system. You might be using like a, a big fancy scoreboard. Again, I'm giving this through the lens of baseball, but you can kind of adapt it to whatever specific sport that you're trying to do. And then you need people who know how to use that equipment, right? So you need camera operators, you need producers and directors, you need replay operators, you need all these people to work the equipment that you have for your specific production. And that's all well and good, but how do you actually get started from the ground up getting into sport production. You can ask a hundred different people in the same exact position like how they got started and you'll get a hundred different answers guaranteed every single time. There's not a single set of journeys that are exactly the same. Kind of one of the big questions that people ask all the time or that I've seen people ask is whether or not you need a college degree. Again, that sort of depends. Uh, personally, I do have a degree and I think that that helps in a lot of different ways, like even outside of sports industry, it's just kind of helpful in general. It does a whole lot of good and it opens many, many doors, but I would not say it's absolutely required. The crew that I work with, some of them are seasoned vets that have been in the industry for a long time, but we even had some folks this last season that were just finishing high school or getting ready maybe to go into college or something outside of high school. So while they didn't have specific college experience, they were still essential to the crew and are phenomenal. So I don't think that it is absolutely necessary to have a college degree to get, in it, to get into sport production, although it is helpful in a many different ways. And that's kind of where basic self-education comes into play as far as like I so shutter speed and aperture, kind of the big three. Knowing those things and kind of learning a little bit and taking the initiative to learn about them without a degree is essential, I would say. YouTube obviously is great for that. There's so many free tutorials and information that you can find available. Like it's insane what we have nowadays. Let's say whether or not you have a college degree at this point, you want to get into sport production, how do you go about it with zero experience? So the deal is thinking back to the pieces of the production's puzzle when we're thinking about things in terms of a funnel, theater, TV, concerts, et cetera, all being part of productions. Those are all fantastic avenues to channel yourself to get into sport production specifically. So to kind of give you like my personal 
testimony or roadmap as far as like how I got into sport production and working for AA Baseball. When I was in college, I worked for the Missoula Osprey in Missoula, Montana, who are now the Missoula Paddleheads. I did that for about four or five summers in a row starting off with just ushering, which is fun, it's cool, but it's not something I wanted to do long term. I got all the way into kind of more of the back of house, like food and beverage. I <laughs> spent a summer cooking hot dogs um, and eventually became one of the managers for food and beverage and I had a blast doing it. It's one of the funnest jobs I've ever had. And then kind of keeping that going while I was still in school, I worked for the University of Montana Productions, which was a production house that was responsible for booking and staffing artists to come and play at the university and eventually worked my way up to the manager of the event staff as far as hiring and training all the different ushers, ticket takers, your day of show staff that you would have. And it was that job specifically that helped land in my interview process working for the missions, was being able to say, I worked for a concert production, kind of <laughs> hones in all the skills that you need that we'll talk about here in a little bit, specifically working for a team and knowing the ins and outs of a production. So even though it wasn't baseball, it was absolutely related in the sense that I'm still working with those production pieces and those people and those things, putting the tech and the people together. Again, working for some of these things to kind of funnel your way will get you where you wanna go. It's really kind of one of those things that you have to look at the journey as, you know, you consider it like a highway. There's many roads leading to the same place which will ultimately put you in the sport or the field or the league or whatever it is that you're trying to get into. Many roads are gonna lead there, uh, but some are a little longer. Some roads require a little detour. You know, here I am working for the missions and it, it took me a number of years to kind of to kind of find this niche. And now that I have it, like I really do feel that every day I'm working my dream job. Kind of the thing is like once you find a specific spot that you're in, a specific role that works and it sticks, you'll develop a routine. That's what sport production is all about. I'll kind of give you a little look into sort of what the missions routine, what every day at the ballpark or the field or the rink or wherever you might be, kind of give you a little taste on uh, what that system looks like. Bit of controlled chaos at times. As far as what things look like on a day-to-day -day basis, what you can expect when you walk into your stadium of choice. Again, every single production is different, so it's impossible to say what your experience on a given day may look like from mine. But again, I'm just gonna go with like what I'm familiar with. <clears throat> My goodness, I'm still some, some schmutz in the throat. Hold please, we got sirens. We use GroupMe for our scheduling and it's something like our production manager will put out ahead of time. On any given night, every single person who shows up to the stadium will know exactly when they need to report, when the script reading is going to happen, which we'll get to in a second, and then what they will be doing that night specifically. So knowing that information as far as having in mind what your plan is for the evening, what you're gonna be doing on that particular night, what you'll do is you'll drive up to the stadium or the event space that you're that you're doing the production in. Typically, the venue will feed you ahead of time, especially for an evening game or if you're having like a matinee, they'll probably give you like a lunch. For me, for example, I'll drive up, I'll kind of set everything down in our control room, which is up in the press box, kind of get situated with mentally preparing what it is that I'm gonna be doing for the evening and then getting a bite to eat. What I find really cool too is that you can go ahead and grab a lineup for the evening and I take that every single time, knowing who is going to be batting in what order, who's the starting pitcher, the roster changes, all those kinds of things are essential to know when putting together a production. It's all fantastic information and to have those resources available, that's kind of the time as I'm getting there where I settle in and start thinking about those kinds of things. The big key item when you roll up is the script reading. Doesn't matter if you're in theater, concerts, TV and film, 
any sport really is going to have a script reading. And what that is, it's a sheet that says exactly what items are gonna happen and more importantly, when they're gonna happen. So a big thing for our script, it'll say, when the doors are gonna open, or the gates, I should say, when first pitch is at, and then what specific items are going to happen in between each inning. And this is something that the entire crew is gonna look at under the direction of the producer or the manager. So the script is vital. This is a time for the entire team to get together, get on the same page, quite literally, and know exactly what is gonna happen within the production. This eliminates all aspects of playing it by ear, which in a production is, no, you can't, you can't do that. You need to be completely focused, completely together, and everything needs to be comprehensive so that you know exactly what to expect for the evening. We always end our script reading by putting our foot in and giving some kind of cheer. It's just another way to kind of bring the team together, get everyone excited, get pumped up, and re-emphasize the point that like we're all on the same team putting this production together, everyone doing their specific part to put the whole thing together as a whole. So after we read the script, put our feet together and break, it's then time to go to your respective position. So whether you're getting on the field, we have a roam camera, which sits on your shoulder. You can kind of walk around and get some nice crowd shots. We have a camera at first base. We have a camera at third base. We have a high home camera operation that sits in the press box. That's where it lives and it gets all the shots as far as the second a baseball is hit, it's gonna be our main tracking shot. And we also have three PTZ cameras, which stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. They're controlled by a joystick. They're like robotic cams. So you, a lot of times in the industry, it'll just call them like a robo cam. We also have a replay system. We have a scoreboard operator who is also in this case, our producer or director of the entire production. And then we have our technical director whose job it is is to kind of quarterback the entire production. They are responsible for looking at all the cameras at once and deciding what's going live at any given moment. And they're also in charge of lining up the next shot to kind of piece the production from start to finish. But you know exactly what you're gonna be doing by looking at the schedule ahead of time. So knowing that, you can kind of mentally prepare for what specific task you'll be taking care of that evening. So we read the script, put our feet together and break, get down to our positions. And at that point, we're kind of waiting for the technical director to tell us when to go ahead and turn on equipment. At that point, when we're ready, the TD will say, go ahead and fire up first base or third base, wherever you're at. And then once the connections there are established, it's pretty much ready to roll. And then you're kind of just, doing the game. If you're not the TD, 90% of what you're doing is just listening. Following through with your shots for what you know you need to get, but then just listening to what the TD is asking for and what he or she is gonna set up for next at that point as far as the shot go. That's kind of when you're on coast mode. Everything should be planned so meticulously far in advance that by the time the game comes, you can kind of just coast through and listen to what your TD is asking for, follow through with the shots, get creative. If, time allows and you know you have the freedom to do that. After you've put everything together, gone through the game and break down, you kind of take everything back and, and that's it. I feel like the majority of time spent in productions is the pre-planning and kind of post as far as coming up with the scheduling, the staffing, the script. That was a big part of what I did at UM Productions, by the way, and it was a lot of fun. And then afterwards, when you're kind of breaking everything down, following up, if you're the technical director, you know, many times you'll reach out to the rest of the staff and say like, hey, great job. Here's where we did really well. Here's what we can focus on. No matter how successful, positive, negative, that you had in the production, because it's never gonna be exactly perfect as you want, you can still have like learning opportunities for what you can improve, what you can do better, and you're gonna make yourself better for the next production. No two productions are exactly identical. This is to kind of look at what I do for the missions, and it's kind of a good formula as far as like what you can potentially expect as far as what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis going into your job as a sport producer. Also, it took me until just now that I've been sitting next to three slices of cheese, like right next to pretty much this whole time. We got a bailout. As we head up to our next destination, I did just want to quickly say, as I run into a tree, I appreciate you guys sticking with me so far. This has brought value to your life in any way. Consider liking, consider subscribing if that's your thing. If you enjoy this content, let me know. I'd be more than happy to make more, and I appreciate it. Oh, there's a cat. 
subscribe for more of my cat content on YouTube. I may have waited just a little bit too long at this point to shoot this because it definitely got a little brighter since we started this morning. The microphone's off. My microphone was off for that for that shoot. I'm sitting here putting this together and I'm like, why does this sound like actual garbage? That's like filmmaking number one. You do not use the audio from the camera's internal microphone because it's terrible. So apologies for that. But that's showbiz, baby. That's just the way it goes. Not every production is perfect, just to re-emphasize the point here. There were three tips that I was gonna give over there at the Tower of Americas. They are specifically sort of the unspoken skills that you need to include on a resume that are almost guaranteed to get you a job working in productions of some capacity with zero experience. So the three non-negotiable traits that you need to have working in sports productions, number one, you need to be teachable. You're gonna have a million questions when you're first starting and even as the seasons go and you continue to further your career working in productions, you're gonna continue to run into questions and do things that could lead to potentially making mistakes like forgetting to run audio during a shoot and only doing that in one take. The sun got to me, man. I don't know what's happening. That's the thing with productions though. Every single thing, positive or negative, it's all teachable. It's all learning. I, it's just something that you, once you make a mistake, you know how to fix it. You learn from it, you move on. But being teachable is not just making mistakes, learning and moving. It's coming to the stadium with questions and with a passion and a drive to learn, whether it's learning how to do different positions or operate different technology, or even just kind of learning about sort of the ins and outs of stadium operations, whether that's football, basketball, hockey, does not matter. Being hungry to learn and being teachable, accepting mistakes, moving on from them, absolute necessity. Second thing you need, be on time be prompt. There's kind of the old school military approach of if you're on time, you're late. If you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. And in a lot of ways, I hate that phrase, but it, I also resonate with it super heavily because that's kind of how I am, not even just with work, but just in general. Like I am just the kind of person who really drives to be early to things. We go to a movie and we're never gonna miss the previews. I'm just gonna say that. We go to a concert, we are not missing the opener. But in this industry, being on time is not a request. It's a necessity. Because the script is so exact and things are so precise and meticulously planned out, there really is no flexibility or wiggle room at all to be late. That's not to say that things will never happen and life will never happen and you'll never run into an issue of being late unless things are absolutely out of your control and you're the type of person who is constantly always on time, you'll do well. And as kind of mentioned earlier too, when you're getting to the stadium with time to spare, it gives you time to sort of mentally shift into the position that you're about to fill and the game that you're about to perform, the show that you're about to put on. Being early gives you that time to adjust and fit into that and absolutely nail your role and be ready every single time. The third and arguably most important piece of advice that I can give is to be communicative. At the end of the day, you're more than just one person performing one task for the production. You're a part of a team putting on a show for potentially thousands or millions of people. So in this case, teamwork makes the dream work. There's not a single person who's more important than any other person in your production. And that includes the technical director, that includes producers and managers. They are just as important as the camera operators, as the replay operators. There's not a single person that is more or less important. You are all on the same team. Doesn't matter about titles, pay scale, whatever. You're putting on the same show. So always staying engaged, staying focused, listening. Listening is a form of communication. If you can do those things well, if you can interact with the team and you can listen and ask questions and be on time, you're going to do well. Do those three things and you will soar in this industry. The tech aspects, those can be taught. These three things need to be so grounded into your work ethic that they are just second nature. Cameo from Marty here too. You weren't going to see Marty uh, over at the Tower of America. So everyone say hello to Marty. This is my production assistant. Uh, he's showing me his butt. And that's, that's very nice. No one else gets this, that's just for me. As a bonus piece of advice, and this kind of may come as a no-brainer, you gotta love what you do. The reality is this industry is likely not gonna make you rich anytime soon. As we've seen, things don't always go right, but that's honestly part of what makes it fun. Every game is different. Every production is different. We've been saying it <laughs> pretty much since the beginning, but every game is different. Every time I go to the Mission Stadium, I'm probably gonna see something I've never seen before, and being able to work through that on my feet as part of a team, I mean, it's 
I love it. I, I'm like, I really cannot wait until April for the season to pick back up. I'm like almost counting down the days at this point. You have to have a passion for this. You have to have the desire to learn. You gotta be able to show up on time. You gotta be able to communicate and listen and you gotta have passion. That's it. Four biggest pieces of advice. Let's take it back into town. We're gonna wrap things up. Well, y'all, that's pretty much gonna wrap things up today. Uh, I guess, did we answer the question from the beginning? Can we define sport production? Did we effectively answer that? Did we define it? Uh, who can say? But no, I don't think that we did. As we've kind of come to find out, there's so many different factors and things involved with sport production. So when you say you work in sport productions, if you're saying that to somebody who's in the industry, who's been doing it for a while, you kind of need to specify from there what it is that you do because there's just so many different aspects. People ask me all the time, what do you do at the missions? Like, what do you do on a given night? And the answer is it just, it kind of depends. Depends on what's needed, what I'm on the schedule for, you know, because there's so many different aspects to what you can potentially do on any given game night. Either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Feel free to give a like and subscribe if you're into that. Um, it does help me out a lot. I wish nothing but the best, nothing but success for everyone getting into sport productions. If you have any other questions as far as like where to go, what to do, what are the first steps, like feel free to reach out to me. You're welcome to comment, leave a DM whatever you got to do going from right now minus 10 years ago i really wish that there was like a specific mentor or different resources that i could have had because there were so many questions that i had at the time that i felt were just unanswered so if this helps you at all and helps answer some of those questions that are probably similar to the ones that i had um getting started hope this helped i'll plan on making more if um if that's something y'all want comment down below uh, if you have any questions thanks for going on my little tour of san antonio with me it's been a lot of fun See you guys in the next video.